Welcome to Permission to Kick Ass, the show that gives you a virtual seat at the bar for the real conversations that happen between entrepreneurs. I'm interviewing all kinds of business owners, from those just a few years into freelancing to CEOs helming nine-figure companies. If you've ever worried that everyone else just seems to get it and you're missing something or messing things up, this show is for you. I'm your host, Angie Coley, and let's get to it. And welcome back to Permission to Kick Ass. With me today is my good friend, Ruth Cummings. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, I love that. Let's just do the voice mic for a second. The mic have, voice. Yeah. I like the um, ASMR. Oh, oh yeah. Hello. <laughs> I, I like some yes. of the ASMR, but I'm not a big fan of like the clicky nails ones. That for some reason drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter listens to it all the time and. I'm sometimes I'm subjected. So, uh, but yeah, I've heard a lot of the, like the, yeah, the, it's not my favorite, but I'm, I'm around it a lot. Different strokes for different folks. We're not being judgy, but we're being kind of judgy. It's okay. Um, I, I can tell this one is going to be full of so many great tangents. I'm looking forward <laughs> to it so much, but before I get entirely lost down the rabbit hole, please tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Perfect. Thanks for having me on Angie. It's been so much fun hanging out with you the last uh, year or so. Um, so I'm a leadership coach. I am a peak performance coach and I do that through body mind IQ. How well do you know your body and how well is your mind and your body trusting itself? How much are they being a team? And, um, yeah, you'll be surprised. Maybe you won't. How much are our bodies and our minds aren't communicating in the society? So my goal really is to, uh, spread compassionate leadership with those uh, by using body, mind, IQ. I love that. Well, and I have a, a deeply personal experience with that that I will share in just a second that is probably going to make Ruth laugh a lot. <laughs> um, but it might surprise you to know. So we met last year at a conference hosted by Ron Reich in San Antonio. And back then, my biggest concern was, I've got a book. I need to find a like. I need to release this. I need to find partner. I was super stressed about this book. And so this book, I actually do have a small piece of one chapter that's like, you need to be aware of how these things manifest in your body. Because like for me, stress and anxiety, I can tell when they're rolling in because I got like that pinch behind my right shoulder that shows up first. If I'm super anxious, it's like a fluttering in my stomach followed by like, I think I could throw up at any second, seriously. So when those things kick in for me, I know I'm feeling some strong feelings. It's time to check in and see what we can do about managing this. Um, but I'm nowhere near an expert. That is just my amateur hour observations about like, hey, my body's trying to tell me something usually well before my mind kicks in and says something is wrong here. Yeah. I mean, we are as a culture uh, taught to ignore that. So it's really interesting. So I've been a massage therapist. This is my 30th year, maybe my 31st. So a long time, three decades. And that's how I come up with this. I've, you know, worked on tens of thousands of people and, you know, over 40,000 hours of work on people. And it's, um, it's just amazing because what I found is like, I work on a lot of professional athletes, but I also work on a lot of entrepreneurs and CEOs and these big company people. And they, when they have the stress, when they have stress, right? If you have a, you know, you're a quarterback and you, you lose a game, like you missed what you're supposed to do. And then you're a CEO and you miss a launch or you have to fire somebody like a really big, stressful thing, their bodies hurt the same. And that's what's really cool. I've been able to bring those specific things that I find in professional athletes and bring it to the CEO and say, hey, as a leader, this is how you could change your body to be better with people, to be better with yourself. We start with the self. Like mm -hmm. if you could be compassionate with yourself, then you're going to be way better at being compassionate with others. And so I don't I don't uh, I don't um, sell it that way because they don't want to hear it first you know, at the beginning. But that's uh, really what I'm leading up to is um, how compassionate are you with yourself? And then mm -hmm. how does that translate with your leadership? So, oh, I get big, like all kinds of fired up, big mad about the, the topic of self-compassion, because what I hear from so many and the, the thing that frustrates me the most is these are some of the kindest biggest hearted bend over backwards to do something for another human being to stop them from suffering. They are the hardest on themselves. And like you piece of crap, like I'm pointing for anybody that's listening. I'm pointing at myself. You big piece of crap. You don't deserve this because you failed in X, Y, Z ways. And we're constantly beating ourselves up with that internal chatter. 
Um, and one thing that I've been, I've learned with all the self development that I've done and all the programs I've been in, like we're in a mastermind together, is learn that uh, I don't have to think these thoughts. And that's been wonderfully freeing. Like just because it pops into my brain doesn't mean that it's a thing that needs to be thought right now. I'm not about to follow this down the emotional downward spiral and get all kinds of out of control. So I, I will think these thoughts when I'm ready to process them and deal with them. And until then, we're just going to keep it up. Yes, that's the and what's interesting is that there's a what I what I'm an expert at is how the body responds to those feelings and those thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the thought like there's a mindset coach, there's many, many mindset coaches. And so that's cool. Like you can have those feelings, you can have those thoughts. But what I want to show people is that you can you can figure this out before it happens because your your body is going to give you hints. So like I I also coach soccer for um I have three uh, soccer championships in my state for high school girls soccer, and I have one tennis high school girls high school girls tennis championship. And what I'm most proud of is that they had zero injuries. Why did they have zero injuries? Because I am an expert at the stretches, the um, oh, the dynamic warm up. Dynamic mm. warm up is like my middle name. And so, <laughs> as a drummer and as an athlete. If you can warm up your body at a specific in specific ways, you're not going to get injured. And even if you do get injured, you're going to heal quicker, like immediately, not immediately, but sooner. And so watching how people heal, I've been able to transfer that and say, OK, CEO, leader, leader of your family, leader of your body. Why is it or how can you prep and uh, before you execute? Figure out mm -hmm. what's happening in your body before you execute, before you fire the person, before you go on stage, before you do your soccer game. So before you're a mom and you're about to tell your kid that they're they're in trouble or whatever, before you execute that, how are you doing a dynamic warm up with your body? And so mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm really good at that. And so it's really fun because I keep finding different words for it. You know, people call me a body whisperer and they call me, I'm my podcast is called Your Body Advocate. And when mm -hmm. I start my my presentations, I'm always saying I'm an advocate for your body. I'm not an advocate yep. for your mind. I am here talking to your body because we are taught in, especially in America, but across the world, I have international clients. We, we, we ignore our intuition. So we can, like you said, go, 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 go. You have to succeed. You have to do this. And in order to do that, you're ignoring your own health. You're mm -hmm. ignoring the, all the red flags that go up. And it's just a, it's so fascinating. I'm just, I'm just thrilled about it. And I'm excited about spreading this. I was spreading this with, I work with a lot of teens and like athletes from, I'd say, you know, like 13 through 30. And that's an age that's, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening at that age group, you know, and, but I realized that actually in our masterminds that mm -hmm. I needed to talk to the people who were leading them and not just mm. those guys. I mean, they're, we've had, we have four adopted kids. We call them their, I'm their mentor. My, my husband is their mentor. Um, and we, we've, we take them in and we, we consider them our kids and, and, um, we've taught them how to be a respectful human in the world and not everybody's getting those lessons. Mm -hmm. and so again, I'm back to the compassionate leadership, start with yourself, do it in your home, do it in your first circles, and then for sure do it at work and spread love and kindness. That's what I'm all about. Absolutely. I am here for it. Let the people say amen. I will be up on the soapbox advocating <laughs> for that. Everything Sister. too. Amen. Um, <laughs> and that's funny. Like I, what I said earlier too, I want to circle back and clarify just in case anybody mistakes what I said for shoving emotions down and not dealing with them. When I say that I recognize that I'm feeling a feeling and I don't have to think that thought right now, I'm not suppressing it. I'm not avoiding it. I'm saying right now, I'm not going to be hijacked by this and I'm not going to let this basically take control of my entire operating system. I'm going to continue as is for now and I'm going to note this is something that needs to be dealt with because it came up in a pretty powerful way. I'm going to come back to this later when I've got some time to think about it and process. So I just wanted to clarify that, like that popped up into my head and I wanted to bring it up as important because exactly like what you said at the beginning, a lot of the pain that we don't deal with shows up in different ways in our body. And this is how I found myself, right? Here comes the copywriting hook, sobbing on stage in front of a mastermind group of about 50 people with Ruth just 
putting t- like was it like two fingers on a pectoral muscle yep and i'm like i'm sitting here doing it in the same spot that she touched me roughly for anybody that's watching the video and i'm like this doesn't hurt why did it hurt why did i start crying when ruth <laughs> touched me there i don't know what's going on yeah you, can you speak to that to that a little bit i can give some more context if you need it but i'm curious <laughs> oh, about no. how that all happened well you know it's it's not um so I think one thing about a body whisperer or any body worker out there, it takes a lot of practice to know where to touch you and then what pressure to use. And so very specifically, I was working on a grief meridian. So it's the L, it's the large intestine. And I'm working on a um, several areas in that area of your body. And so you say a few words and I know what lines in your body are going to be tight. And I know how to like, it's like, um, putting two, like if you're at um, a kid's museum and you're in the electronics part and you put, you want to get the light bulb on and you like match this to this and all of a sudden the light bulb goes on. That's mm-hmm. what I'm doing. I'm just touching oh. those area in your body. I'm just letting your body, again, I'm speaking to your body with very gentle touch saying, Hey, I'm listening. I am right here. And I know that you're hurting here and maybe you're hurting here. And then it goes, oh, and, uh, <laughs> And the body's like, oh my God, someone's listening. And all of a sudden, um, you, you, your body feels safe and heard and uh, mm-hmm. acknowledged and all those words. And then, and then the healing can start to unravel and to, to the onion layers can start to come off. So yeah. it's a fascinating thing because uh, I, I, it's really easy to do right here because there's so much held right here. You hold all things that need to be said. And so, and the neck holds all communication, anything you need to hear, anything you need to say. And when you don't say what you need to say, um, it creates this, this tension right here. And if you don't swallow, if you don't internalize, if you don't digest what you need to hear, it also gets stuck. So there's, there's a lot going on right here. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to, once you're trained in it, um, to really, to really be honorable to the body and to, to give it what it needs in a very gentle, sincere, calm, loving way. And, um, and I just mm-hmm. love doing that. It's a, it's an honor. And thank you for letting me work on you. Yeah. Like I truly had no idea what to expect when I volunteered for that. So like the full context for everybody listening is we're at a, a private mastermind event or a, pri- a private event in San Antonio. And it's a three day event where we're focusing on mindset strategy and execution. Right. And this is the end of mindset day. And we've got a whole bunch of, we've got you on stage. We've got spiritual folks. We've got intuitive folks. We've got mindset coach on stage doing a panel. And all of a sudden they ask for a volunteer. And I was in the back of the room getting coffee and I just see everybody kind of looking at each other, like who's going to go up. And before I even knew it was happening, my hand was raised and I'm like, what the, no, don't do that. And they call me up on stage. So I get up there and I'm like, my, my go-to when I'm feeling nervous or overwhelmed is to just like crack jokes all the time. And I think everybody on stage picked up that like, I'm scared. I am cracking jokes. I'm like, I'm, I'm being the entertainer as the default. And um, when Sasha Lipskaya was talking to me and then you were working on me, what came up was, and this is why I say all of this stuff is a practice, right? Everything that I talk about on the show is a work in progress, not Angie is like the guru that has it all figured out because we're all human, right? But like I'm on stage and all of these repressed emotions come up, all of this shame that I had from, uh, and I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but like a business partnership that didn't go the way that I wanted it to. And I had taken that super personally, like a sign that I am a failure. I don't know what I'm doing. And I hid it from the world because I was ashamed of it. And it all came out that day. And I had so many people that came up to me afterwards and were like, Oh girl, I could tell you a story. Oh, you are so far from alone. And that was just such a great reminder of like, you're never going through anything totally by yourself. Somebody out there in the world understands what you feel and has been through something similar. Um, And shame does you no good. Like you're suffering in silence. Shame thrives in the shadows. Shine a light on that shit and let people in to help you clear that out and keep moving forward. Ooh, that was a rant I didn't expect, but there's your context. (laughs) Well, you know, I I agree with you that that um, there's so many people out here that uh, can help that. And mm-hmm. uh, to speak to, you know, your, I didn't know if you were going to say what was, what was going on. So I, I was being gentle, but um, I remember what I asked you was, um, do you feel betrayed? 
Do you mm. have betrayal in your life? And that's in a very specific spot between the shoulder blades and the, and um, it's like that spot that you can't get because you've been stabbed in the back. Oh, so it's, man. it's right where your back would, where like you'd be like, oh, you can't grab it. So anybody who can't, who's just listening, I'm trying to grab something in the middle of my back. Mm -hmm. And so that area, um, it, it shoots straight through to the front. And that's why, that's why I was able to find those. And um, so if you're feeling pain or this, this, this chronic uh, uh, nagging uh, knife pain in your back, then I would suggest looking at um, um, some type of betrayal in your life sometime. It could be as early as I'd say three years old. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at it and see if, uh, if that also comes to the front. But if you can work it out on yourself by thinking about betrayal and really working on that, writing it out, um, talking it out to yourself or um, things like that. That's how someone, that's how you could fix betrayal on yourself for anybody listening. So, mm -hmm. well, and is that betrayal in a, like a self sense, like you feel betrayed by your own instincts? Is it external betrayal from somebody else? Is it a combination of the two? I'm really curious about that. All betrayal by God, All betrayal. by, Ooh. by society, um, by, yeah, for sure. We got the inner circle, you know, you have yourself like, okay, I, all right, this week I'm going to exercise every day and not have pizza. And, um, you know, then you don't, and there's this betrayal. That's a, that's one that I use on stage because we can all relate to that where, um, you just keep betraying yourself. You keep betraying yourself. So that's one of them. The next one is like inner circle parents betray us a lot. Um, siblings betray us a lot stuff in work, but you know, like, uh, um, for me, I feel betrayed by God. I feel betrayed by the medical system as my husband has passed away after seven misdiagnoses of cancer. So like that, yeah, my back hurts a lot, sister. So like there's, so you can be betrayed by the news. You can be betrayed by a lot. The betrayal is a big part of our society and being able to have it roll off you like a duck. Uh, I haven't found many people that are able to do that very well. <laughs> so... <laughs> That would be, that I'm doing a, yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, just putting together, um, a body, mind, IQ test, body, mm -hmm. mind. So like, how good are you? That would be a number 10, you're number 10 or a number nine. If you can let that roll off you, someone betrays you and you're like, Oh, I got this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but, um, me either. You know, oh my gosh. I'm around 30. a four in betrayal. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> I want to punch around you the same in level. the, it, yeah. I'm going to punch you in the private parts. That's kind of how I feel about <laughs> betrayal. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Given um, a, a topic that came up yesterday, I wrote about on social media that I had a couple of instances, and and these are kind of like a betrayal of the people that I spoke to. Given that, like, they I'm very upfront about who I am, and I was on one podcast where somebody for some reason photoshopped a tweed jacket on me and a necklace. The necklace is like an extra fantastic touch. I don't understand, but like they photoshopped this on me. And I was very much struggling with, do I go tell them like, this is not okay. Why didn't you talk to me? I would have submitted other photos if you didn't like the one that I did. So there was that situation. And then yesterday I had somebody um, give me an article draft to review where they had sanitized one of my stories. And by sanitized, I mean, I had said I had a, a life changing epiphany at a business event when I was at a bar. I got a little bit tipsy and I wound up, I still don't know how this came up, but I wound up telling a story about getting into a mosh pit fight. You saying junk punch is what, what reminded me of this. And uh, they took that out and said, you know, when I told people about the rock show I had been to, they, they leaned in and I was like, no, when I told people about the mosh pit fight, they leaned in. And that right. was the thing I was ashamed to share with people because I'm like, are they going to think that I'm, violent are they going to think that i've got anger it, what are people going to think of me now that i have just like whoop, let the cat out of the bag and apparently what people think about me is she's funny and like she doesn't take any guff from anybody and to be fair all of the mosh pit fights i've been in have been self-defense or protecting somebody's <laughs> child wait wait wait! all of the mosh pit that means there's multiple so you go girl there have been three Three. Okay. It's not like I'm out there fighting every weekend. Also, like recovery time in your 40s versus recovery time in your 20s. <laughs> There's a big difference. But yeah, There's in my 20s, difference. it was it was self defense. So oh gosh, what was it? Oh shame tied into that too, and a little bit yeah. of betrayal in working with those folks. Of like, no, I've done a lot of inner work 
to be comfortable with the fact that I am very unconventional. I have been told all my life I am too much of this or not enough of that. Change everything about who you are to make me comfortable. So now that I'm finally comfortable, people who are still uncomfortable with me and uncomfortable with themselves try to change my image on my behalf and it pisses me off. I've been working with that my whole life. We were talking about this a little earlier because um, I was born in Germany and in Germany in those years, um, I was a soccer player and my, I have an older brother and we were, I was going to his soccer practices and at seven, the, um, the German society and, and they wouldn't, they would let me practice, but they wouldn't let me play. And it, it just broke my heart. And I, I can remember being there already as like, ee! and um, they're like, you're not a boy. I'm like, nope. <laughs> they're like, well, you can't play. I'm like, what? And that kind of started this, this down, you know, downhill. If you tell me I can't, um, no. And so it just started like, I, I just, I could care less what people think. And I just do what I, what I am drawn to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's not always easy to do. And for sure I go into this, oh my God, are you, should you say that? Oh, what? No, you should just quit. You should just, just be quiet. Just be quiet. And like, that's my little me, me, me. And um, I went on to, you know, play soccer, coach soccer. And then my, um, I did the same thing in drumming. I had ADHD and I still have, I, I just, I'm very, you know, hyper. And as a kid, that was really, really hard. And one of the things that helped that was becoming a drummer. My grandfather was a drummer, but I didn't know that until later. So I paid for a lot of things in high school, paid for a lot of things in college and, just have so much fun. And I'm, I'm still drumming now. And, um, that really helped my massage if you can consider. So my hands were really strong. I go to massage school. I have the strongest hands of anybody there. But then the other thing that I recognized like a year later is that I could hear rhythms with each separate finger. And that was so cool. And that also has helped me do what I do now is because I can see how you respond over here. If I'm holding your body, I can see how you respond. If I say, hi, hey, um, you know, how was work today? And like, you know, there's things that, mm -hmm. that tense in your body. I can tell the difference between different spots. And so um, I'm able, that's why I'm able to connect them. So I'm like, you know, the things that that I was drawn to do in the, my my journeys, I'm just so excited because they were meant to be, they were, they were in, in the exact place they were supposed to be. And if I hadn't been a drummer, I wouldn't be here right now. And so, mm. um, you know, I, I like fighting, uh, unfortunately, I would probably not, <laughs> I should not be around any mosh pit fights. Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> I would protect everybody. I used to joke about that in, uh, in my twenties, right? I grew up a very angry child and I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure that's fairly evident, evident by the way I conduct myself these days. I've done a lot of work to heal that, but in my twenties, I was still a very like angry, spiteful person. And a lot of what drove me was anger and spite. Tell me I can't do it. I freaking dare you tell me I can't do it. It's what kept me in the fire department long after I realized I wasn't really born to be a firefighter because other people told me, we're trying to make you quit. We don't think women belong here. We don't think you're strong enough. We don't think that you're capable enough. And I was like, watch me lift this car with my butt. I'll show you how strong I am. Um, but that, that drove me for so long. And so this is actually what directly led to those mosh pit fights is that was a safe space to let out the anger. That's exactly what people expected in a mosh pit. And there's three basic rules. All right, we're, we're going into mosh pit lore. We're just gonna be musicians today, right? Um, there's three basic rules. If they fall down, pick them up because we don't want anybody getting broken bones, getting run over. And I've actually fallen down before and had the crowd break around me and pick me back up. So that, that happens. The second rule is if they want in, let them in. <laughs> and the third rule is if they want out, let them out. It's like basic rules <laughs> of how to That's, conduct yourself. Yeah. And I would go to these shows and like literally stand on the edge. And if they were having fun in the mosh pit, shove them back in. Like we got a little bit of controlled aggression here. We're all having a good time. Um, and the the first time that all of this happened, somebody punched me in the face and tried to take a drumstick that I had caught that that the band I was there to see had thrown out. I caught this drumstick. He sucker punched me, grabbed the stick and tried to take it out of my hand. Um, and so <laughs> it's like, I don't think so. That is not what is happening today. You picked the wrong one. Um, again, this is Angie in her angry days. I, I really don't think I would be fighting like that these days. I don't think I would be in a pit these days. That would hurt too much. <laughs> that sounds, um, 
very effective, <laughs> effective for anger management too. You know, we got to yeah. get that out sometimes. <laughs> A sanctioned Good place to get it out. And that's, you know, that's what I've been learning over the past several years too, is like sometimes when the feelings are too big, I just need to get it out physically. And I've done that through dance. I've done that through drives. I've done that through literally like raking the lawn and singing at the top of my lungs, name, neighbors be damned. Um, whatever you got to do to move it through. This is amateur well, you know, hour on my half, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you singing, you know, singing is a huge way. You could do it in your, in the shower, in the car to get things out that you're not saying. You don't actually have to say what you need to say. You just need mm -hmm. to move these tissues in your throat. So like if you, you could hum, that's why the, you know, the om, om som hum is so, is I think that's what it's called is so good because it moves different parts of the throat. It hums. Um, mm -hmm. and then you can change the, 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 the tone and it gets out different styles of emotion in your body. So, Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, you should check I, that out. Go, go look at those, like how to hum, hum mm -hmm. and sing it. Like the, you know, the high notes will do certain ones. The low notes will do certain ones and you can mm -hmm. actually hum so that it, it makes your chest, uh, vibrate here vibrate the middle of your throat vibrate under your chin vibrate yeah so that's probably why you love to sing because mm -hmm. it has allowed you in a, in a in a beautiful way to get rid of all that anger towards whomever and mm -hmm. it, it just goes and then and do you feel good after you sing I feel fantastic like it was such a surprise when all this came up actually it came up with Brian McCarthy who's a friend of yours and a friend of mine um, we were talking about when I get sucked into anxiety spirals or I'm feeling not my best, or it's a, like, how do I get myself back into a state? What are common things that I use to feel better? And I was the one to bring up the fact that I really, one of my favorite things on the planet is driving somewhere with the windows down and the music up and singing at full volume, not caring what I look like. I don't care. If you see me driving by and I'm, I'm scream singing into the wind, mind your business or sing along, who cares? But like, I, I don't care what you think. Um, and it, it just, I don't know. It's kind of like letting all of the air out of a balloon instead of being scared it's going to burst and, and their catastrophe will, will take over everything. It just lets it all out, takes all the pressure off. And I feel great afterward. Even if all I've been singing was angry songs. Right. It's interesting because you already, you were taking care of your body you know, mm -hmm. without even knowing it, you, it wasn't on purpose, but you were doing it and you were doing it on purpose. But I'm just telling you, you guys were like a team right there. And you were like, oh, nice. Hey, what I need. And I would really like to sing. Okay. That's a great idea. That's a little conversation going on. And then it, you know, it's, it's such a loving, uh, it's a gift to yourself. And mm -hmm. that's a great way to co have compassion for yourself is for you to go sing while you're driving. So good for you. Cool. That, that reminds me of the time that I read a book called Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, um, because first of all, what an awesome title. Um, second of all, I grew up in South Texas where everything related to what we're talking about today is quote unquote hippy dippy bullshit. That is like, it's all lumped together, spiritual woo woo nonsense, right? And I have come to understand that it is the farthest thing from woo woo, like, nonsense made up stuff. There's actual reasons why all of this stuff works, works in conjunction with our brains, with the way that we understand our bodies. Um, and I'm reading this book and I remember he would talk about certain tactics that he used to calm himself down. And I'd go, that's meditation? Well, crap, I've been doing that. Like I had my own version of that. When I was losing my apartment in LA before I became a copywriter, I would wake up in the middle of the night with my thoughts already racing. Like, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and you're already thinking thoughts from a dead sleep? So that's what would happen. I would be thinking about all of the consequences of I'm running out of money. I don't know what to do. I'm running out of time. And I came up with this mantra where I would just say, strength, peace, faith in myself. And I would repeat that over and over and over while trying to breathe very slow and deep. And eventually I would fall asleep and I'd like wake up in the morning going, okay, cool. We needed more rest. The rest is more helpful than staying up all night worrying, which is not actually helpful. So this is amazing. See, you're, you're, you're a natural, you're a natural. And it's like, you know, that, that we all have this, I mean, this, like you said, right at the beginning, that way that we beat each other up, we beat ourselves up, you know, we're, we're the, 
that's a, you know, I work with a lot of teens and their parents. And one of the things that I talk to them about is like, don't, they are beating themselves up enough. Like you don't need to tell them how bad they are. They got that. Like if you, if you continue that their body just, it just starts to wither. But if you give them, um, you know, consequences with love, then there's and like just affirmations, you know, I just think you're so beautiful. I just think you're, I love your smile. I like the way, I love the way you hug and I'm, I'm, you're really good at concentrating just little things. Those are what lift them up. And then, you know, I was also going to say like, you know, the, um, I was in massage school. So I went to massage school. I was an athlete. All I wanted to do was sports massage. So in, when you talk about woo woo, there were the classes in the, in the, in the, this massage school, which was awesome that I was taking where the classes were about to be on energy and energy healing and, you know, what to do. There is like the beginning of that class. And I went up as a cocky little, whatever, 20 year old, something like that. And I was like, so I'm here for the sports massage and this class really isn't for me. So I'm going to sleep under the table during your class, you know, cause it's just, uh, it's just not, it's not for me. So, um, thank you. And, um, all right. And then I seriously went under the table, <laughs> fell asleep or, or like totally was a total bitch, like not paying attention. And then, um, I, uh, just ignored the class. He was like, he was totally kind at probably a hundred massages into my career. It was only a hundred, right? I was like, only. Oh, oops. You know, I really, yep. th- holy moly. I'm getting headaches when people have headaches. I'm getting neck pain when people have he- neck pain. I am, I am missing something here. There's no way I can make it in this career if this continues to happen. And I went back to him and I begged, I was like, I'm so sorry. Sorry. I was so rude to you. Um, but I realized I need this. And he was like, Oh, I was wondering when you were going to come back, but it was just, I was raised that way too. Like there was no, there's no, um, there's no room for that. And so I have learned to put all those together and to respect everything that comes to me. I believe is there for a reason. I don't believe in coincidences coincidences. And, um, yeah, it's been, I have some stories, Angie, but, uh, we don't have time today, but (laughs) it's just been, I'm so honored. I, I love my career. And, um, my husband used to tell me, he goes, I'm so jealous of you because it's like, God came and touched you on the shoulder and said, you know what, you should do this. And you said, okay. And you've been doing it since you were little. And like you, you know, you have your passion, you make money with your passion and you help people like you do exactly what you were told and you're just having a blast at it. And um, I agree with that. So, you know, I think that following your passion is um, I'm also really helping people try to do that because it just makes life so much easier. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm a big fan of following your passion. And, and I admit to being a little bit envious of that too, because Every time I told people what lights me up and what makes me happy, I got the message that that's really hard to do. You should do something that is a little bit more stable and more guaranteed. And I know the hard thing about reconciling all that, because I told them I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to be a musician. Those are the things that make me happy. And of course, we all know what the response to that is. You don't want to be a starving artist. That's a super competitive feel. Everybody wants to be a writer. Everybody wants to be a musician good luck. You're in for an uphill battle. Uh, and, and at the time, and I know that comes from a place of caring that they're trying to protect me from having my heart and my dreams stomped all over. So that's what makes it difficult to reconcile this. I know this comes from love. And I also know deep in my soul that you are fucking wrong. <laughs> like, this is yeah. something I need to do. And every time I ignored that need to create, to express myself, to write, and, and tried to push it down and do something else, quote unquote, more professional. I was miserable. I suffered. And I would have thoughts of this would be a lot easier if I weren't here. Wow. Yeah, that's scary. But that's very common, you know, and I'm very sorry that you went through that because it's interesting because every time, every single, every single thought is something that gets stuffed under the rug, you know, so like our rug is uh, the body, the, the, the dirt is the stress or the, the bad statement. And then our mind is the broom, you know? Mm-hmm. So it goes, let's just put it into the body. Let's just put it back into the body. And it keeps doing that. And unfortunately it has to go somewhere. And if you can't let it out with singing or whatever, it does build and it does create this armor for us. And it does kind of, it, you know, it makes it harder for us to love and harder for us to be loved. 
and it's a whole, it's a whole thing. And, um, I am, I'm really proud of you for look where you are, you know, good for you. you. It's yeah. still a work in progress. It's still a struggle. Well, so, you know, and that's part of the impetus behind this show is that I just wanted to show people that struggle and success aren't mutually exclusive just because you see somebody on stage shining like a rock star and they've got the business that you've always wanted doesn't mean that there's not something under the surface that they're super struggling with. Um, and that was really important for me to share with people because that changed the course of my whole life. Like you don't have to be perfect. Look at us showing up here with our broken bodies and our sometimes dejected spirits and still waking up every day to try again. Like what a miracle, how freaking badass are you waking up and choosing to be here today for everybody listening? I love you. If nobody's told you that lately, I absolutely love you. I say that from the bottom of my heart. We want you here. You need to create. You need to be here. You need to inspire your fellow human being. You need to inspire yourself. I did not anticipate that rant coming out today, but here we are. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, loving each other. That's what we're here for. And mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times we forget that. Again, it has to start with ourselves. But even when we're not loving ourselves, like if you go out and you help somebody or you just smile, what I tell my guys, like if you're if you're just down and you're like, oh, I don't have any money. I don't have any ideas. I'm, I'm going to, you know, every my whole life's going to go into the toilet tomorrow. And you're like, OK, let's let's pull it back a bit. And if you just go outside and smile at someone at the grocery store or at the at walking or at the park or any, anywhere you can find another human um, to pay it forward just with a smile can really change your life and theirs. And I have a whole I have a whole presentation on just the power of a smile. And I think that we we have a lot of power towards others. And if if just a smile can change someone's life, then, you know, I think that helps your life just know how powerful it can be in the in the days that you just don't feel like you're you're going anywhere i can remember i mean the amount of days there's definitely angie i think we've talked about this before there's more times um feeling down almost than there are like hey i've got this oh my gosh i you know i there's just all those all that doubt where do you i'm a list maker and I'm actually writing a book with Cindy, right? With Cindy Childress, who's also in our mastermind, a great friend of both of ours. And Cindy, you know, she's like, Ruth, um, you know, you've given me the same list about <laughs> eight times <laughs> and I've made the same list. That's how my mind, you know, and because I doubt, I have this doubt of what, or maybe I'm going to miss something. Mm -hmm. And so I have the same list and I give it to her. And I'll make a same list on the notes app, send it to her that way. Say, and I don't realize it's the same list. I think I'm really making some progress on my book. And she's like, hmm, uh, um, Ruth. And, you know, she's so gentle and kind. And she's like, can we, you've, um, this is the same list. And I was like, what? And uh, yeah, I'm learning. Like, that's what I do is I repeat what I know is positive. And that's because what I teach that <clears throat> when you are doing something like for you, the singing, if someone's out there and there's a time where you feel really good, maybe it's gardening, maybe it's hugging your pet, maybe it's cooking. There's, there's different ways. We all have our own ways. And um, if there's one thing that makes you feel better, like why does it make you, where in your body does it feel better? And try mm -hmm. to do more of that, do mm -hmm. more of that. And then try to like, like an eclipse that can eclipse like the, this week. That can eclipse the other, the negatives, the imposter syndrome, the, you know, I don't deserve this. And I'm just, you know, what am I, why am I even trying? You know, I can remember starting my massage business and the people at my parents' church were like, so um, why are you learning how to be a prostitute? <laughs> what? Like, what? Wow. Oh my Thank God. Thank you so much. Um, Talk about a logical leap there. <laughs> right. And no disrespect to sex workers. Like, okay, come on. Right. Yeah. Oldest profession. Do what you got to do more power to you. Be safe. Yes. Be safe. Yes. It was just some, you know, and like to not take that personally, like you're saying, it's hard not to go. Poof. And, um, obviously, cause I'm saying it now, here we are 30 years later. I'm like, mm -hmm. huh. Um, but that was a definite, you shouldn't do this. You can't do this. This is a terrible thing for you. All that list that you make, you know, you make in your head after all they say is one word to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's like, wow, wow. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to make this work, you know? And so, and I did, and I'm proud of it, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think that's fascinating. I, I wanted to circle back to something that you said and unpack it a little bit because we were kind of talking about when everything is intense and like, why am I even trying? This is such a struggle, right? 
at the root of all of that, and I say this without any trace of judgment whatsoever, is me. I'm suffering. My life is hard. This is a struggle for me. I don't like this, right? And I'm not saying that you don't matter when I say this, but right. But when you're the center of the universe and your world is this small, like I'm holding up my fist to the camera so that people can see, of course, your problems are literally taking up the entirety of everything available, right? And so one of my friends actually changed my life. She's a psychotherapist by the name of Dr. Julie Helmrich. And she said, most people think that when you're in this space where like all of your problems are taking up all of your life and there's no room to breathe, that the answer is to shrink the problem somehow. And that is not the answer. The answer is actually to expand your world so that the problem doesn't take up as much of that. And that really helped me to understand this, what I call me versus or me thinking versus mission thinking. When the world is all about me and my problems, that's when I tend to hear that quiet little thought that would say it's, it's easier if I'm not here, right? Um, because my problems take up all of my vision, all of the air around me, and it's hard to see. But doing something like you said, going outside and reminding myself, there are other people in the world. They're also suffering too. Can I do a little thing like smile, compliment someone's outfit, start a conversation with a stranger and see how they're doing today? That will just add a little bit more positivity to the world. And I think that'll reflect back to me and do some good for me too. Fantastic. Let's do that. So I'm a big fan of like reminding myself when stuff gets tough. Get out there and remind yeah. yourself it's a big old, big old world. We are a speck of dust on this giant blue rock hurtling through space. Um, <laughs> there's a lot left yeah. to do and we can still have a hell of a good time, even if today is pretty rough. Yes. No, I totally agree. The smile, you know, you're talking about that. I talk about in my smile presentation about, and Mel Robbins, there's some other people that mention this. If you go in front of a mirror and you smile to yourself, it's very hard to be angry in that, mo that moment and like practice your best smile. Mm -hmm. And I also tell people like when they're walking into a room, you're feeling really insecure. What I've always done since I was little, I don't know how this came up, but I, I, I've, I can remember doing this in Germany. So that was before I was seven and I'm walking into a room with a bunch of people I've never met or, or they, they're, they're angry with me. And I, I walk in as if I've just heard the funniest joke and I'm kind of laughing, like, like I just heard it, like, <laughs> that's, that's so good. And then mm -hmm. you come into the room like that and people are like, you know, they look at you and they smile. And yep. then they, and then you've got this whole, okay, we've, we've dissipated the, you know, the, the discomfort and mm -hmm. at least I have a smile over there. And so like, then I would look, I'm like, okay, I've got four smiles. All right. Which was best. And, whoop, and then I would go over that way. And I've told people to do that. And I still do that to this day. Like if I'm feeling insecure, I just smile my chest out. And I'm like, oh my God, that was the funniest joke. And it's no joke. Like, I'm like, ah. And it's so funny. It works every time. And I, I, that's one of my things that I do to deal with my stress of like, you know, um, I'm, I'm quite an extrovert, but there's times where I'm, I'm an introvert, which is really interesting. It's because my parents are, but so anyway, smiling just and giving another thing I like to say is to pay it forward, pay yes. it forward. Just even if you don't feel like you've gotten anything, like you're feeling in lack, you know, oh, no one's, no one gives me anything. So I don't want to give anybody back. And I'm like, well, that's not where it starts. It starts with you go and give for it, pay it forward. And then you'll, you'll get back. And that has never failed. That has never failed. And I, I just encourage people to do that too. All those things that I'm telling you, they help the body. Every time you smile, your body relaxes. Every time you give, your body relaxes. Giving is more about us because we get so much from it. It calms, it, it puts things together. It'll just, it, it really calms the body. It, it, it connects all those electric um, points I was telling you about before, all by yourself, just by smiling. So. Oh, that is like, that's the perfect note to just wrap it up, tie it in a little bow, just smile and yes. breathe. Okay. Uh, I could go for like three more hours because this is fascinating to me, but I'm going to cut it short here. Please tell us more. Where do we learn how to work with you? Where do we look all of this stuff up? What can we, how can we work with you? I want to know. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, I'm working on a book, but it's not ready. And that's going to have all it's, it's, um, it's a, uh, a reference guide of everything that I've ever learned about where things are held in the body and all those things. So that's coming, but I do what's called a body audit. So, and that will be in the show notes and what, I, and it's online. And what that, what, what happens is I, um, you and I talk on zoom 
And I can, when I say you, I mean your listeners, and I can look at their body and tell them where they're, where they're hurting and what it means and how to get rid of it. And we do a body map and it's a whole thing. It's what I did for you, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I can do it online and it's going really well. Um, we just started these, uh, last year and my team is just so cool and it's really fun. And I'm on, I'm Ruth Cummings coaching on Instagram and, um, yeah, anybody can get a hold of me there or, um, you can go to my website, ruthcummings.com and, um, you can get a hold of me at support at ruthcummings.com. And so I'm happy to help and I can give you some ideas also to work with teams or with teens or whatever. I'm happy to help. All right. I'm going to make sure that they have clickable links to all of these things in the show notes so that it's as easy as possible to get a hold of you. Thank you so much for being a wonderful guest. I'm like, I'm going into the rest of my recording day with such a big smile. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, I want to let you know also, I'm letting your, your listeners have my body audit for free until I, yeah. Cause it's $300 for mm-hmm. free until April 22nd. I'm not sure when this is airing, but then it swaps over to a, uh, to a paid version. So if they, if they still need it for free, they can, I DM me and, and we'll make, we'll make it happen. All right. Thank you so much. What an incredibly generous offer. What an incredibly generous offer. Thank you so much. Cause you're awesome. You're awesome. Let's just keep this awesome fest going. Thank you so much for being on this show. I'll talk to you soon. That's all for now. If you want to keep that kick-ass energy high, please take a minute to share this episode with someone that might need a high-octane dose of you can do it. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the Permission to Kick-Ass podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. I'm your host, Angie Coley, and I'm here rooting for you. Thanks for listening, and let's go kick some ass.